Well, here's finally somebody stepping up to the plate in the room. Peter Ducey, the gladiator, Fox News, questioning John Kirby on why he's still giving them humanitarian aid. And just listen to his response to a lot of the stuff that took place. Thanks. John, has President Biden considered maybe beefing up the public Iran posture to be more than just one word? You're, you're referring to don't. Yeah. And so let's talk don't, about. And they did it anyway. And let's talk so about what? what we did, Peter. Let's talk about don't and did. Let's talk about Saturday night. He made it clear that he didn't want to see escalation in the region. And, and let me finish. He added military resources to the region right after October 7th. And then when we had an inkling that this kind of thing was coming, he added even more military resources to the region. More destroyers that were capable of shooting down ballistic missiles, fighter, a fighter squadron that was able to shoot down drones. And that's what we did. So you can talk about the, the don't word all you want, but let's talk about what did happen. And what did happen was Iran utterly failed. And if I'm sitting in Tehran right now, I'm betting that President Biden takes it pretty seriously when he says, don't escalate. He's going to act to make sure that you can. And they didn't. Yes, they fired an unprecedented amount of munitions, but how much of a success did they have, Peter? None. Zero. Very little infrastructure. It was an embarrassing failure for the Supreme Leader and for the IRGC. Now that we know that the Iranians do not listen to President Biden's public warnings, is there any regret here about unfreezing billions of dollars for Iranian leaders during the president's administration? What unfreezing are you talking about? He unfroze billions of dollars. For there Iranian was leaders? Yeah. Really? I don't think so. Okay, so first I of all. It's for humanitarian purposes, but doesn't that. But you don't un, believe me. Well, doesn't that free up money for them to spend on other stuff? Where do you get the money for an unprecedented number of munitions to, to fire at Israel? So first of all. Actually, I would love to answer this question, Peter. Well, they got a billion dollars a few years ago from Barack Obama, part of the Democrat Party. Um, that's where they got some of their money. And they're also getting a $10 billion from the Democrat Party, specifically Joe Biden of your hard-earned taxpayer dollars. Uh, that would probably do it on top of the fact that we left, I don't know, billions of dollars of military-grade equipment in Afghanistan that we know, some of which went to Iran, also went to Hamas there that attacked, uh, I don't know, Israel. And that comes from the Israel intelligence community. So uh, that, that's some of the money there, Peter. Uh, but great question nonetheless. Let's see this knucklehead try to answer this one. I'm betting... They're sitting in Tehran. They're taking it seriously when President Biden says he's going to defend Israel. We put skin in the game, a whole heck of a lot of it, and knocked almost everything out of the sky. So I'm betting they're taking it pretty seriously. And as for this, uh, this unfreezing, none of that fund, none of those funds, funds set up in an account, by the way, by the previous administration, goes directly to the Supreme Leader of the IRGC, can only be used for humanitarian purposes, and we're watching that account very, very closely to make sure that that's what happens. And you guys often defend all the trips to Delaware by saying the president is not on vacation, he's working, he can be the president from anywhere. So why do you have to come back on Saturday? Well, we got indications uh, shortly after arriving. We got uh, better, firmer intelligence and information about the the specific timing of what we expected to be uh, this Iranian attack and the president didn't bat an eye before getting back on that helicopter and coming back and he was here all Saturday night in the situation room from mid-afternoon till late at night getting real-time updates from General Carrilla and from his defense team all throughout the night including calling Prime Minister Netanyahu right from the situation room and as Kareem mentioned on Sunday he was right back at it again working the G7 calling King Abdullah I don't know what else to tell you. He had a very busy full weekend. Very busy full weekend. Guys, uh, yeah, I just, I got to ask. I, I got to ask you. Does this guy look busy? Does Joey look busy there? I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Bald Brad Show. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our future content.